Hey everybody, Nerdy Transformed here again, and today I have the Age of Extinction Deluxe Class Strafe from Transformers Age of Extinction movie. Now, if you don't know what Strafe is, he's a G1 character who was originally part of the te a member of the Technobots and helped and helped to form uh, Computron as either as a arm or a leg. He was a, a ship that had two guns at the front, and well, it was just a spaceship with two guns at the front, so it had like double-headed, and. Strangely enough, they decided to kind of bring him back as a Dinobot in the uh, Age of Extinction movie. So yeah, here's Strafe. He's based on a Terror. Uh, let's see, Terrandon, Ter Terradon, Terrandon. Except that he has two heads. And no, not an actual Terradon actually had two heads. But I guess since they use the namesake, they decided to use the gimmick as well. So he has two heads, and he looks pretty cool actually. Uh, there are there are a couple ways different ways of posing him. You either ha have him standing like this, you know. Or you could, you know, have him in full flight mode with his legs down like this. You have to fall him to the side due to the toes and the, uh, knee, the little kneecaps. And have him in a flat out flying pose like that. Which looks good too. Let's go ahead and do uh, size comparisons. There he is next to Warpath. And let's go for... There we go. You can see he's quite a bit wider than the Air Deluxe Dinobots. Oh, a lot flatter too because he is in a flying pose, but... He does look pretty cool next to him. Get him out of the way. Get Warpath out of there. Now he has a lot of neat engineering. I, his transformation is a bit simple, but his engineering is really cool. So, as you would expect, he uses the same legs as his robot legs, just kind of folded up. So he has full hips that are ball jointed and a swivel. He has a swivel here. He has a slight knee joint. Only very slight. Only does that much, but you can use it. His toes can go up and down, which is also for transformation, but you could, you know, get look like more like he's flying outward by having his toes sticking out the back. His tails are made of soft rubber. And thing is, all of them in package are sitting like this. So no matter what, because of the soft rubber, your tails out of package are always gonna be like that. You could use hot water or cold or cold water, whatever it is, to um stiffen them to make them like this. But I honestly don't mind it too much, especially since in his robot mode, he kind of needs to go off the side anyway just for him to stand up. So I don't mind it too much, but if you do want to fix it, there are multiple ways online to fix it where you can have them stick it straight out the back or at least curling upward like this. Now the neat bits of engineering on him are that his arm, his arm is basically, his robot arm is basically pegged to his wing. But because of how they're put on, there's actually on a separate hinge to where you can still move the whole thing without the interfering. And even have it go up and down because even though they're on two different hinges, the hinges are in the same spot, just separate. So both the arm and the wing can still move in Dinobot mode, despite them being on separate pieces. You can see this one's on an actual hinge while this one's on a ball joint. But you see, they both still move in time with each other so you can still get like... You could have him kind of have his wings inward so he's like soaring downward about to crash into something or about to pick up or grab something or maybe he's just showing off. But I love that bit of engineering that he has full use of his wing even though his arm is pegged into it. And yeah, you know, you got you can twist the wing up and down. You can move it. It's, got, it's on a hinge so you can move it down a bit. And then move it up and down like you saw. You can flap it back and forth, flap it up and down. It's also got a hinge on the outer edge so you can kind of have it more collapsed in or full wing spanned out. And the heads have the same articulation just on separate pieces. They both swivel. Uh, does look a little bit odd and they both have a hinge but it can make it look like your neck's broken but you can kind of have it looking like they crashed their heads together or something. And they do have a hinge to go up and down on both of them and both their mouths do open up. So you can kind of get, although one of them's kind of giving me, giving me a bit more trouble. There we go. It was just stiff. So you can also have their mouths open or semi-open or, you know, one's like rawr, and your one's like rawr. You know, all that silly stuff. And like I said, the legs, mm, a little bit of articulation. You can move the hips outward enough to where you, as I showed at the beginning of the video, have them actually standing up. And you can also get kind of a roosting thing with this where you can kind of fold his wings and kind of have them down like this. So you can have him kind of displayed like this, you know, tails down, which just kind of on the ground, looking around, maybe he's picking at something on the ground. One head's watching for prey, and the other head's watching for predators. Could be kind of cool, there's a lot of different poses you can get with him. 
like I said, you can fold the wings back, kind of get a roosting thing going if you got him hanging on something. So yeah, there's all that. And yeah, looking at the bottom of him, yep, just basically the robot just hanging off the bottom. But I think the engineering he does pull off is pretty cool. He does have accessories that you can use in this mode. He has his two swords and his crossbow. Meant for robot mode, but you can use them in this mode. Like, there's pegs on the edges of the wings here, and there's also pegs in the claws themselves. So if you wanted to give him a bit extra weaponry, you can peg him in there, or you can peg him in on the claw. You can peg him into the robot hand, even. Which is easiest fit, it's laced tight, really. Mostly because it's a bit more open. So you can kind of just pick him in there, and then you now he has pointy spikes to ram things with, and you could pick, he has a pick hole in his back as well, so you can pick in the crossbow there. So, you could say you've got an armed crossbow you can shoot without touching it or something. Another thing I like is uh, the crossbow, if you actually look, has the same details as the edge of the wings. So you could actually peg this in backwards, and it kind of blends in as part of his back. Which is kind of like how I like to do if I display him in his dime. I like to put the crossbow on backwards and just kind of pretend it's part of his back. And it doesn't look too bad, really. Like, from the top, at least. Looking at it from here, yeah, it does look a little bit weird, but from the top, it looks pretty nice. It blends in pretty well. So, yeah, that's his accessories that he can use in this mode. Let's get on to the robot mode. To transform him, we're going to start the legs. You're going to want to twist them around. And basically his shins and feet are about to flip places. These shins are about to become his robot feet and these dino feet become his shins. How this happens is you basically start pushing it outward and it just simply flips down. And then the dino feet, there's a tab here and in the dino feet have a tab hole in them. So they actually tab in together and that locks the leg in place. Or at least locks it to where it doesn't flip back up. Flip it down, tab it in place feet now nice and steady and much longer so he's got a bit more height. You see what I mean about the tails are going to kind of just drag on the ground anyway. Come up to the arms. They're just simply tabbed into the wings. Go ahead and bring them down and now they can work separately from the wings. I'm just going to close the expanse a bit so you can get a better look. This is a bit interesting for his head transformation. You got to take the necks of the Dinobots and of the Dinobot heads and spread them out a bit more. And then you can grab this fin here and pull it up, and that's his head. And you can see it actually doesn't just come up, it also has a panel that comes up with it to kind of fill in the neck. And then these dino's heads, you're going to want to kind of point them outward, and then on the hinge they're on, just flip them in. And there's a couple different ways you can pose them. You can kind of either pose them like this to give them like a very heavily armored chest or very wide chest look. Or do as I prefer, just kind of have them down slightly, like this where you still see the details of this, but still have the heads as kind of armor. And there you go, straight in robot mode. Very simple, which is what I like about Age of Extinction, but I, I really enjoy the transformation. It's just enough to please me, and like I said, the engineering of it all really makes me happy to where I don't mind his transformation being so simple. Especially after ones like Grimlock and Slog, who are overly complex and don't hold together well. Strafe is simple, but his pieces, when they're pegged in right, do hold together very well. He doesn't flop around. It gives you a lot of freedom in both modes. Alright, let's go and get comparisons out of the way. Here he is next to Snarl, whose wingspan's almost as big. Warpath. And let's go for uh, Bruticus. Mostly because I like showing off Bruticus. Might get to him soon. So yeah, here's Strafe, and we're going to look at his details first, because this is where this really big, like, as I mentioned before, all the Dinobots had an aesthetic of looking like uh, knights in the Age of Extinction movie, and here it really does kind of come out like a medieval knight who has powers, like, uh, have, any, has it, have any of you ever seen King Arthur and the Knights of Justice, a 90s cartoon? There's actually a character who can fly who looks a lot like this, actually. And it's really cool, and it really does look like a knight who can transform into a, di a dinosaur or something. And he's very different from the other ones, because all the other ones are kind of bulky, or uh, at least have like big upper tops like Snarl does, or like Slog and Grimlock, where they have really bulky sizes. Well, here he's a bit more slim, which kind of fits for uh, being a flying dinobot, much like Swoop was, much slimmer compared to his buddies. 
And but it still looks just as threatening, if not more threatening, because he still has that very armored, very sleek look. He looks like he's fast, like he looks like a ninja almost. Let's look at the head sculpt, which is a very nice little visor kind of head sculpt. Looks like a nice big helmet, ready to kind of just bash somebody's head in. Um, arms, uh, shoulders are just kind of shoulders, but the arms themselves have kind of a gauntlet look. With like, heavy armored gloves. Even little spikes on the edge to kind of like, just, you know, just spike somebody's head. The chest is very cool, it has some very cool detailing, which you could have seen in dino mode, but I like to show it off more here because it really is meant more for the robot mode. has almost like a crystal gem in the middle with like heavy metal plating all along the middle and off the top. And even under you kind of have like a, a dinosaur or dragon scaling going on. Crotch, uh, it's unpainted, but it does have a lot of nice details again, kind of the scale effect going on with armored pieces. And the hips have kind of this plating effect, almost like he's got several plates of armor going down. Or again, maybe like a dragon scales. And I also like that on his shins, he actually uses the, uh, the dino, like, toes, I guess, or toenails to kind of give it, like, this spiked shin look. Which does look threatening. I wish they extended out further, at least above, above the knee, so you could kind of get him, like, spiking people with them, but it's still nice. And again, the legs are kind of a cross between a dinosaur and a uh, armored. It's got like armored look with plating for a knight, but also kind of points for the kind of shows a sharp, dangerous dinosaur that's ready to just spike somebody in the face. And like, it's very sleek, very armored, very tough looking, but also very dangerous and awesome looking. And in the wings, oh my god, the wings. The paint on the wings is just amazing. You got the black here, it's nice sleek black with the blue fading out into silver on the edges, and then Autobot symbol tampoed on either side. And it all just looks very nice. You also got the silver on the claws on the top there. And it, it's just a beautiful look. And even the tails are spray painted silver, again going from blue kind of just fading into silver. And there it's a bit more obvious it's, it was just kind of spray painted that way, but I don't mind it. It doesn't look too bad. And on the back, there's nothing really on the back. There are some details, but nothing much. The wings just look amazing, though. I mean, that's another way. There's a lot of different looks, looks you can get from. You can have his wings fully out and expanded like this. You can kind of have them more up and like ready to fly, but not flying at this moment, or maybe in the middle of flight. Or you could also, if you don't want him to take up a lot of space, have them folded up like this, and kind of gives him this heavy armored look, like he's got a big shield on his back. And again, it all just looks so nice. It's very cool looking. Also has its accessories. These are supposed to be swords. I'm not sure which way the blade is. I, I want to say the silver part is the blade, but you also have these edged thinner parts on the out, on the outer part. So I'm not sure which way supposed to, which way you're supposed to hold them. I hold them. I have them hold them with a the silver front. So I just think it looks better. I mean, it's silver paint, so I'm going to guess that's the front. Then he also has the crossbow, as mentioned. And I like that if you're going to give uh, a Dinobot a gun, you give him a crossbow. That just seems so fitting to me. Like, a mid like again, with the knight as a knight's aesthetic, it kind of gives him that medieval look. My only problem with this is that he does not have forward elbows. He only has bicep curlers. Which normally I wouldn't mind, but it looks awkward when he goes to hold his, like, the crossbow, you can just have it hold out, you know, it looks just fine. Sword, you can't quite do that as easily. Because you have him hold it out, and what is he doing? Oh, he does have a hinge at the hand that kind of helps, so he can maybe look like he's stabbing something with it, but it looks more like he's poking, you know, poke the wall. Poke the wall. So yeah, and since I mentioned it, might as well go ahead and go over articulation. The head is on a ball joint, although you could accidentally push it down since the hinge is a little loose, but the head's on a ball joint, you can look all around, look left and right. Shoulders are on a ball, on a, not ball joint, but, no, I think that actually is a ball joint, no, I think that's two hinges. Alright, so it's a swivel and a hinge, but universal movement like a ball joint. Swivel mushroom pug right, uh, plug right above the uh, elbow, elbow is a bicep curler as mentioned. Hands are on a hinge, and this is not for transformation. This is just to give them hinging hands, I guess. Which can help a bit with some poses. He does have waist articulation, though. His tail could get in the way, but if you lift up the tail, you can easily do it. And yeah, tails are 
tails are on one hinge together, so they move back and forth. Ball joints for the hips. Swivel. I uh, do got a knee joint, and if you want to kind of count this as a double knee, you can unpeg it, but it doesn't work too well. Uh, swivel, and nothing at the feet really, but they're nice and solid, so I don't mind. And he holds, he stands up just fine in different ways. And uh, the wings, as mentioned before, were, are on a hinge, and they have their own swivel that does not involve the arm at all. You can see it's kind of in between the arm and the chest, so you can move it without messing with the arms. So if you want the wings more on top, so maybe you could kind of like claw somebody with them or slice them with the wing, you can do that. And he has a hinge on the outer parts of the wing, so you can get them more wide or closed or whatever you like. So yeah, that's everything that Strafe can do. And like I said, between the details, his simple trans but still fun transformation, just everything he can do, it is very nice. My only real complaint is I wish he had forward elbows. That is my only complaint with his figures. I wish he had forward elbows. If he had forward elbows, I'd say he's perfect. Yeah, he's simple, but compared to after all the air movie figures that we've had, I don't mind him having a very simple transformation. Oh yeah, and he has one other gimmick. There are small pegs on the outer side parts of the uh, of the uh, crossbow, and there on the pegs themselves there are very small peg holes. So you can actually attach his uh, swords to his crossbow. I'm not sure what good that does it, but you know, you can kind of give him a really big stabby weapon, or one thing I like to do is bring them together and kind of pretend it's like a really big, like, bladed crossbow. Like when it shoots, it shoots the swords with it or something. And yeah, it kind of looks like a cool weapon in his hand. Kind of looks like something out of Custom Robo. Well, yeah, it looks like a gun from Custom Robo, actually. But yeah. That's the other thing he does. And, like I said, it's all really cool. He's got a lot of stuff he can do. The articulation's re really good. And again, my only real complaint is I wish he could move his elbows forward. Besides that, I think he's a really great figure. I think the wings are a lot of fun. They can make for a lot of cool poses, especially if you uh, utilize the peg hole in the back there and use a stand to have him fly for flying poses. It could be a lot of fun to mess around with. So yeah, I highly recommend Strafe. You, if you skipped out on eight, all the other figures in the Age of Extinction line, I would highly recommend Strafe and Snarl. They are easy recommends for me. A lot of your figures are kind of iffy, but Strafe and Snarl, I, I can easily recommend anybody, especially Strafe here. He's just a lot of fun to mess around with. And with them looking like knights, they're very open to being repaintable. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this review. I'm Nerdy Transformed, and I hope you have a great day. See you later.